This week, Nelson and I interview Lee Marsh of Stolen Throne Cigars. Stolen Throne is headquartered in Virginia. They manufacture cigars in the beautiful country of Nicaragua under the supervision of Noel Rojas. The sole purpose and goal of the operation is to focus on creating great boutique cigars the right way. We're going to talk about the right way. Can't wait for that. From tobacco selection to the smoker's experience. And in our second segment, we have the sticks of the week. Today's stick is the La Cruz de Rey, Central Fino, Sun Grown, number 60. And then we're going to have our sticks of the week. I'm sure Nelson has some news. I have some free uh, cigar scissors to give away. Stogie Geeks, episode 348 starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote... Drew, who is remote over in Texas? Look at you. You got some Stogie Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Stogie Geeks, welcome to episode 348. I am your host, Joe Hozempa, sitting here in studio. Nelson and I have the chance to interview Lee Marsh of Stolen Throne Cigars. Cannot wait for this interview. Cannot wait for this story. I believe they debuted around May of 2019. If not, I'm sure I'll, I will be corrected. Uh, email, if you want to correct me already, email all of your complaints to Nelson at stogiegeeks.com. He will handle all of the complaints. My email is joeh at stogiegeeks.com. But first, I want to introduce you to a kid who we don't have an identity yet for him and how to introduce him quite yet. It is remote from his den. It is Nelson. Nelson, welcome back to Stogie Geeks. What's up, I'm man? Down in the cigar den. Hey, what's going on, Stogie Geeks? Super stoked. Uh, to talk to Lee Marsh, big fan of their stuff. So uh, this is this is super super exciting today. Can't and, wait. And you got some freaking swag that has fresh to death. Oh, dude, I love this hat. You know, what one of the, cool the freak? Dude, I got I got a cigar. Check this baby right? out. Check <laughs> look, out that ashtray. Look at that. Oh, is that the, from your little making thing that you do? Your no, wood this shop? is. I got this from Stolen Throne. Oh, all right. Because Nelson, like you know, never left the Boy Scouts. He always like takes cigar boxes and does ashtrays and stuff like that. But hey, recycle, right? Yeah, man. I think it's great, Nelson. It's it's weird uh, seeing you remote, but uh, as we get a little bit more restrictions, probably weird just seeing me. But yeah, yeah. So <laughs> uh, we we need we need an intro from you. We have Drew, the little dark haired kid from Texas. So, uh, and that actually came from uh, some listeners and some people in the industry. Uh, if we save some time after our interview with Lee, um, if my ADD kicks in, uh, remind me and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll tell you the quick story as to how that came about. Uh, Story Geeks, yeah. if we want to have a naming contest for Nelson, email me oh, at joeh at storygeeks.com for an intro. Lee, if you have one, ping me on the side or you can give him one. <laughs> Who knows? It might you stick. It. You're right? It might stick because because I got I got Joe Hollywood, right? Uh, it's it, I was never known of Joe Hollywood until uh, January 2nd of 2017. That was when I started Story Geeks. And um, it was Joe Hollywood. And I actually started getting some Joe Hollywood stuff uh, there. And, um, yeah, it's it's uh, I have a flask. It's Joe Hollywood and Stoy Geeks. And it's super cool. Um, anyway, um, yeah, that's 
That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Drew is a little dark hair kid from Texas. Nelson, we need a name for you. But you and I have the opportunity to interview uh, Lee from Stolen Throne Cigars. He's he's one of the founders uh, there. Uh, he's going to tell us uh, how he got started. Lee, welcome to Stogie Geeks. Thanks for having me, boys. How's it going? Uh, I, I'm, it's going great. It's going great. I got a Bloody Mary. Uh, I had your cigar with the crow on it. The throne, what's the name of it? No, it's crown. a raven. Yep. It's Crook of the Crown, no problem. Crook of the Crown, right? That's okay. I, I've i been butchering cigar names all my life, so it's all good. Look, man, as so, long as you don't call it bad, we've heard about it. No, <laughs> I'm, I actually, actually uh, had the opportunity to have that cigar right before the show, so it's fresh in my mind. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, as sure. well. About uh, There is a, a, a very strong transition within that cigar that I noticed right off the rip. I know Nelson had some, and obviously uh, you, you've had some. So I've had we, a few. I've had so, a few. So we can all talk about that uh, there. Nelson, I'm sitting in your seat. I don't like it. Just so you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I, whatever. I'm, we'll talk later. I'm all fidgety, man. I'm all fidgety. I, I don't. It's, I, it's I'm awkward. Not, I'm, I'm a righty. It's weird. Uh, I'm a left. I'm all screwed up. I'm a lefty. It's in my way now. I'm like, you know, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Lee, tell us. First of all, you, the name, like, like I'm super, super marketing geek, super story geek. Um, I believe that you know every cigar there is a story worth knowing. Um, tell us host and the story geeks and, and the story geeks community like like how you came up with that name how you got started why you got started and we'll go from there so how i got started man it's just uh from a very grassroots setup right like i, I started as a consumer i just you know i was traveling a lot for work um hitting cigar lounges across the country across the world um and just hanging out smoking cigars and you know and it became a real passion. JR and I met uh, working together. And then we always talked about like, hey, wouldn't it be cool? If, what would we do if we did a cigar? Oh, yeah. How would we do it? Um, and all those things. And then it just it, it compounded over time, over time. We, and then finally, JR called me out and he goes, time to get it off your ass and let's do it. We keep talking about it, but I'm not getting any younger. He's like, so let's just do it. And the next week we were off to Nicaragua and uh, started it there. I apologize. My dog is being a jerk. That's okay. <laughs> it, it, uh, that's okay. If if you had little kids, they'd be wanting to stick their face in the Zoom call anyway. I have a two-year-old, oh, yeah. so I get it totally. It's all good. I have a two-year-old as well. She's not here right now, or she would be on the Zoom Yeah, call. she'd be like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> like, that's, hey. Right. that's right. Cigars? Cigars? She knows about, she, you know, my yeah. wife goes, oh, that's great. Her first vocabulary after daddy was cigars. Yeah, I got the little <laughs> bit of the family slap when I took my, my little one to Little Havana already. Nice, nice. <laughs> you know? I haven't been able to get my wife to let me get Remy down to Esteli yet, but we'll see. <laughs> mm. It will happen. It actually, the culture, the uh, lifestyle, the, the 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 pace of lifestyle. Um, you know, I understand that it's different country, different circumstances, different amount of money that that you can certainly make, but the lifestyle is something to be a little bit desired for. Um, if you can get used to that that way of living, because it is very relaxing for sure. Well, that's the thing, and I I, I think you hit on a, a really big thing. I, I always hear that cigars referred to as hobby. It's not a hobby, man. It's it's it is a lifestyle, and I can tell you from everyone that uh you know that's in my inner circle, the closest we all met through cigars. Yeah. Even the guys that work for us, yep. they they started out cigar smokers in our circle, and you know Josh, he um he showed up at our very first launch event and basically never left. And same with Kevin, our director of sales. He, you know, he just started hanging out with JR and I at our local and just really got into it and mm -hmm. then started making our boxes and the ashtrays like Nelson showed you. And it, it just very organic, man, very grassroots, very relationship driven. Everything we do is about being authentic and, and doing things the right way. Um, the name you asked about the name. Sorry, we got sidetracked. Uh, we're, um, we're, it happens to me all the time. <laughs> so the, the name time. was like, dude, that was the hardest part. You know, I came up with the crook really, really quickly. Um, the name was super, super difficult just because for that, for that reason, it had to be authentic. I didn't want to have to fake it to sell it. Like that's not who I am. That's, that that has nothing to do with the fabric that I'm cut from. 
And so it, it really came out of being a spiteful asshole. So JR and I were at a dinner with a, a bunch of other folks in the industry. And there was a guy being a real dick about it. Like he's just, you know, it was a other, another Virginia company and basically didn't like the idea of us getting into the industry, especially someone much younger hmm. um, and said something like, uh, you know, there's no seat at the table. So, well, I, I said, you know what? I used a choice word and I said, well, I'll steal one. Hell yeah. And so JR and I got back to the drawing table and basically he was like, Hey, you remember you, that time you told that dude to shove it up his ass? Yeah. yeah, I yeah. Throwing cigars. <laughs> and then after that, man, the crook of the crown really just rolled off the tongue and it, it's been brand specific ever since. So when are you but, coming out with the, how you like me now? That's right. That's right. <laughs> how you like me now? Right. Well, they're out of business now, so I win. Oh so, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can know. tell you, uh, from this seat, it, it's, it's, um, it, it's it's really tough to be at the small batch level, but there are some people that kind of shine through the cracks, right? Uh, and 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 you know, it, it's it's not me being cliche, right? It, it, sure. If in you know, you live where in Virginia? Yeah, yeah. I lived in Newport News, Virginia. Okay. Oh, Newport. Oh, I took a train there all the time because my father was stationed in Norfolk. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah. Uh, Jr. lives in downtown Norfolk. Yep. So it's like. It's like, you know, all right, if you take Main Street, Virginia, or Main Street, you know, Rhode Island, wherever, right? How come a breakfast nook, I'll just keep an easy example, can open up and be very successful? And then another breakfast nook opens up and it's not successful. And they're almost on the same street, right? And, and so you always look at it like there's always a seat at the table. The business, the one that is successful most likely wasn't externally centered and focused on the one that uh, wasn't like, ah, well, they serve this at this price and they, they just do their thing. And that yeah. is like, and, and, and like, I'm so big on like, like that other gentleman who is now out of business and now you, you know, came up with the name, right? That happened in purpose in life for, for, for you to like, like be almost etched with you and your partner to say, okay, like, we're going to do this and we're going to do this our way. And that's, yeah, that, that is so yeah. important. It, yeah, it's a hundred percent, man, but that's how I've been all my life. Right. Like, you know, I've been the whole thing, everything I've ever done from my football career on, I was never supposed to do. Someone's always telling you, if you come from a blue collar town, you know, I'm from Baltimore. Someone's always telling you, you're not supposed to make it because they never made it. Right. And so it, it, it is about doing your own thing, not worrying yep. about whatever, what everybody else is doing. And I think to answer your question, I think that's a big problem when you talk about the small batch people or, you know, whatever the case may be is you're trying to copy somebody else inside of, instead of doing what you want to do, what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had conversations within the industry with other people. If you're worried about what I'm doing, you've already lost. You try, right. You right. know, so it, we don't, all we're trying to do is do what we want to do. Our, our goal is to make quality cigars at a premium level at an affordable rate that people really enjoy. That's what's important. That's it. And when you talk about it, we we started a little different because we're consumer centric. We're not a yep. we're not big flashy. I don't have a website for that reason. Like I don't want to be like everybody else. If you know, you know. Yep. And it, it it comes from strategic partnerships and taking care of the people that take care of us. And it's worked. Yep. You know? Um now we got lucky along the way. Like th let me let me not sit here and say that we reinvented the wheel mm -hmm. and you know and did something completely different. We got super lucky. We had a lot of people that believed in what we were doing and how we were doing it and they jumped on from the get go. I mean, we sold our first 10,000 cigars in 3 weeks. Mm. I mean, we sold wow. out. Here I am thinking, "Oh man, I don't know what we're going to do." But yeah. here we are, you know, sold out 3 weeks in. I'm like, "Holy shit, what the hell are we going to do now?" Yeah. You know, but yeah. it's been a while, right? We used I'm really sorry. No, nah, it's all good. It's all good. Um, no, nah, so it, it's it's been a super super crazy ride, and we're super thankful because. But for that reason, yeah. man, we're just doing our own thing. Yeah, yeah. So, I think um, you know that that analogy of the seat at the table that that to me is is very indicative of how the market is or the industry is. Right there, when that guy said that to you, it's almost like he he's thinking there's only so many seats at the table, right? And I think the market dictates how big the table is and how many seats are at it. 
And, you know, you, in your case, essentially, you you took over his seed maybe, right? But the market is going <laughs> to dictate, do, do we need more seats? Do we need less seats? How big is the table? It's all in, It's all if you're doing the right thing and people like it. Well, I, I think it shows a, a lack of understanding of really the market in itself, right? Because the market segment that I'm after, my target market, they're not just smoking stolen thrown cigars. They're not just smoking one brand of cigars. So they'll just because right. they're buying a crook or they're buying a call to arms doesn't mean that they're not gonna buy a Roma Craft. They're not gonna buy a Dunbar and they're not gonna buy a Tatawahe. That's not how this works. That's how any of this works. Right. And 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 to be honest with you, for guys like me, I don't wanna be the only cigar you smoke because then how are you gonna know the difference? How are you gonna know what we're doing differently from everybody else? And so that's that, a that very goes good back point. To not worrying about what everybody else is doing. If you enjoy our stuff, that's what that's what I care about. You know, it, you know, I always tell people and it's it's true. Like one of the things that I constantly say at events and, and interviews is if you spend your hard earned money because cigars aren't inexpensive. If you spend your hard earned money on our stuff, I take it really personally. That's what matters to me. I don't care who else is selling you cigars. I care about the fact that you chose to spend some of your budget on my stuff. Right, right. That's actually some very, very phenomenal points, right? It's like when you start to focus on um when 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 you start to focus on on what other companies are doing before your company, like you you you're kind of stuck in the mud, right? And I I have the privilege and honor to to meet with a lot of reps and I see it even at like the bigger level of a cigar company. Where the reps, like I meet the rep and they just go poo poo on other companies. Can you believe they did this? They did that. I'm like, dude, be you, bro. Like, who gives a crap what you know? This one's doing, that one's doing. Like, don't you have a quota to make? And don't, isn't your job like to sell cigars and gain more market share and to tell the story? And by the way, right. last I checked, that cigar company, the one of the gentleman I have in mind, like they have a super cool story to tell. And even though they're bigger, but like there are whole cigars companies that are made in your factory. So yep. why the hell are you even like going poo poo on people and whatnot? And and by the way, one of the brightest people that I've met within the industry from a retail standpoint was my original cigar shop partner when I owned a retail shop. And when I switched to Cigar Club Radio and I got him for a sponsor and we, we, we did a bunch of promos, I'm like, man, what do you think about, like, this three more cigar shops going on at Wells Avenue here in Providence, right? He goes, Joe, I would love for a guy to open up a cigar shop across the street from me because then we'd be known as, like, the cigar spot, like, the whole That's block. Right. Like you know what I mean, that, and and, and, that, and dude, that's a great that's a great point, man. Because and we we see it here too. Like you, just like cigar smokers smoke different cigars, they smoke at different lounges, right? Well, if you create do. an experience that's unique and you're doing your own thing and delivering a service in your own way, people will come. And it doesn't have to be this cutthroat thing. Like if they're buying from me, they're not going to buy from you. Like that's on you in terms of being a businessman. Differentiate your product selection. You know, and, and develop those those strategic partnerships where, you know, we, we go out of our way not to delude ourselves. So we're not in every store and we're never going to be in every store because that defeats the purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about for me, especially for the first year and a half to two years of the company is taking care of the people that took care of us. There's a lot of people out there that own shops that took a chance on us, mm -hmm. right, with giving us shelf space, giving sure. us money and, you know, it, Taking their putting their reputation by handing their customer our cigars. So how does it serve them if I open right across the street with their competitor now that you know we're popular? Right. That's not right. Right. That's not right. 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 Yeah. Some of them get their panties in a bunch and and stuff like that. I, I think we nailed all of that point for sure. Um, what's your strategy in 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 regards to like? Okay, you did start around May of 2019. Is that correct? Am I all? You are correct. Cool. Right. Um, and, you know, it, it, like what's your like you, you how many blends do you have? So we have just the when we launched, we just had the crook. The crook of the ground. OK. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of people called me crazy. Right. I have a lot of really good friends that are really supportive in the industry that, you know, mentored me, gave me the do's and don'ts. But they're like, oh, you, you you're you're starting with a Maduro and you're there's nothing else. 
I said, yeah, man, but think about it. No one knows who I am. You were asking for shelf space. So I'm going to go in and ask you to sell multiple cigars that you've never heard of. Right. Sure. So yeah. every everything around the way we launched was just about establishing ourselves, laying a foundation, even from the way we display. I don't know if you've seen us in retails, but we've created a box where both our sizes fits in roughly the same amount of space as a competitor, uh, a, a rival cigar company's bo regular box. Yep. So that retailer can offer two facings in the same space as one because getting getting shelf space was the hardest part. I knew that. So why would I overwhelm you with a portfolio? Right. You so, know, so we started with the crook. Yep. And it, it blew up. It took off. And when the call came, it was about being offering something in the portfolio that was totally different. It had to be because the crook had done so well. Yep. You know, I didn't want my baby to be compared to whatever came next. Yep. You know? Yep. Um, and it, it it's really just about continuing to push those levels of flavor and 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 whatever suits whatever i think you know our market segment's going to enjoy and what i enjoy smoking it's really and that's the thing we talked about before we went on the airs you know even though i always tell people that the consumer owns the brand i run the company i own the company but the consumer owns the brand mm. but i am an extension of that brand so i'm sharing my palate with you when we do these blends and we do these different cigars and so the things that you know i really enjoy i'm trying to share and see you know see if the consumer enjoys them just as much yeah it sounds like you treat your business with your partner uh the the same way that i treat stogie geeks right uh i've often explained this to nelson and drew either on air or off air um it's a platform right the brand it is the brand is the listeners right the brand is what the listeners tune in where they go how they consume it via audio or video they have an option of both um you know and 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 the feedback that we get back from the listeners and uh, you know it, it's like i'm here there were previous hosts before me and nelson and drew and 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 then you know who knows that there, there might be another phase of host in the future uh that that are totally different there and and but the brand of story geeks has stayed together um which is it's interesting right because you almost have to like just do your own thing in order to accomplish that you can't go into it having a agenda even though the agenda is to sell cigars you just can't go and say you know something you know stone throws we're gonna put it on the map and we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that and we're gonna create this next thing and we're gonna it's like nah like you made a conscious decision like hey man this this first cigar was awesome uh, it sold well. It did well, right? It did well for your version of well, right? And we got to come up with something different because consumers vote with their dollars. And if they're like, well, it's not like the other one where well, you're trying to go for the same and then they start to do it like you wanted to come up with something totally different. And it's hard to to keep that creativity up and to really um, define like what your next step is to keep that shift moving. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think that what you, you nailed it is that the, the biggest thing is when you're, it's all about authenticity. And once you're authentic with your process and what you're trying to do and you're being transparent about how you're trying to operate, it makes it a lot easier. But if you're going to take the time, effort and money away from other things, the opportunity cost is so great. Then you have to put your best foot forward, yeah. right? You, you can't fake it. You can't try to play the consumer like an idiot because they're not. Right. And, and so it, it comes down to being who you want to be because you're right. It, yeah, we, it did really well, but I didn't know that I believed in it. I always believed in what we were doing or I wouldn't have done it. But to tell you that we're here in the, you know, coming up on our second year, I'd be lying. I knew we would get here eventually, but I didn't think it would be here now. Right. And everything we express ourselves with the crook and the call is basically like you said my platform because at the end of the day i had to love it because if i couldn't sell it i was smoking ten thousand of them well right so if you love you it know, it's not it, a bad it, idea it, but it, it's not a good investment <laughs> no it's a terrible, it's a terrible well, investment. well it depends and, i don't know you smoking a half price you know i don't know <laughs> yeah but you know the thing is, is that, yeah, yeah on, the, on the surface you're right you're, you're smoking a half price but right, at the right, same right. time think about the time 
and money and stuff you spent away from your family that I'll never get back. You and I talked about how we both have two-year-olds. Yeah, There's a a ton of time where I'm traveling the world. I'm away from my kid. I'm away from my wife. I'm spending money, you know, that I could be investing in the family. And so it has to work. Yep. It has to work or, or what? Cause you're not getting that time back. Yep. Absolutely. You know, so why fake it? And I think that's one of the things that really gets in under my skin. And you and I talk about it is just be who you are. Don't try to be something you're not right. right? Like that's, that's all the smoke and mirrors in the industry really drives me crazy. Like just be authentic. Don't, I I don't, I, there's this big thing of where you have to lie. And I don't ever agree with someone calling themselves a master blender. If you're from Columbus, Ohio, right? Like like it's very hard. And it's not, I just picked a random city. No, I gotcha. Garnered at anyone specific, but (laughs) you know, it's about like, if you didn't blend the scar, why are you saying you did? No one cares. If you said, Hey, I have a palette. I work with someone. I wanted a scar. They gave it to me and I sold it. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. No. And so, and so where I get, you know, what chaps my ass is like, you know, because we spent the time sampling, you know, with brokers, sampling tobacco, selecting tobacco, working, screwing up monumentally and having Noel tell me this is why I went wrong. Yeah. You know, so those are the things you, you can't you really, really can't in this day and age with the consumers that we're dealing with, you can't cut corners. And I love it. That's the best part for me. I, I, I love how intelligent the, the boutique smoker has become over the last 10 years because I'm one of them, yeah. right? Like I started smoking everything like everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. Nelson, you're getting fidgety over there. Me? Yeah. I'm waiting my turn. All uh, right, it's your turn. Well, you first, got? I want to hit for all the master blenders in Columbus, Ohio, on behalf of Stogie Geeks, we didn't make, we meant no offense. <laughs> no, of course, of course not. <laughs> if you're a master but, blender from Ohio, email all of your complaints to Nelson. That's right. And if but, and you um, can CC, at least you can kind of stay on this. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, staying on this topic a little bit, I, w- I was going to ask, you know, you mentioned the um, uh, the Crook of the Crown, which w- was my introduction to Stolen Throne as well. I believe you then came out with the Call to Arms and then Correct. the Oath Taker. And I'm wondering, you know, as as you may- had those learnings from Crook of the Crown, right, did it, did it help you a lot in coming up with the other two lines? And also, are you seeing the same kind of traction that you did with the Crook of the Crown? Yeah. So the, so we, you're right. We did the, we did the crook. That was our first regular production. And then we launched um, the call to arms right in the middle of the pandemic. Um, We did do some special projects, the Argos with Winston's humidor out of Richmond. And we did the Oath Taker with Cigar Federation. Um, Yeah. So the, the way that I operate in terms of creating blends is I try not to be myopic. I don't go in to the, the sampling and blending process like okay i have to make this this is what i'm looking for i I let the tobacco do the talking because we're smaller so our availability i might now be able to get things the bigger guys can get and if i do i gotta buy it all and so i generally start with the process of what i have available to me and see what comes what what shakes out um as far as traction with the call absolutely i the the call sold out wholesale in four days um wow. now that sounds great but with the anticipation of our next release and how long it took us to bring it to production that was going to happen what we've seen is the turns after the fact were just as good if not higher than the crook um because it's so different it it, it appears to it you know appeals to a, a greater part of the segment and you know you have those people who they love the crook but maybe they don't love the call and the same thing vice versa um We've been super, super lucky in that regard. Um, our loyalty from consumers and from our partners in retail has been awesome. It's It's been great because I'll be honest with you, Nelson, I think you and I have talked about this privately. I was scared shitless when we were going to launch the call because I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, well, I can only go down from here. The crook was so great. Like everyone really loved it. Right. What happens if this falls flat? And luckily that didn't happen. <laughs> Amen. What, what's the process that you use when 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 you're walking into a retailer, right? You you said something that that kind of struck struck a chord with me, where you said, you know, I kind of let the tobacco do the talking. Is that your is is that your really like lead in? 
uh, when, sure. when yeah. you walk you in? You know, we, we've been really lucky. And when we talk about the consumer, mm-hmm. uh, I'll be honest with you, Joe, like 85% of our new account, a new account capture has been word of mouth from consumers that go to those shops. Mm-hmm. So there hasn't really been a huge need to sell on my part. But that's generally, you're right. I let the tobacco, I let the quality of our cigars do the talking. I let our price point do the talking. And, but generally our biggest pusher is the consumer. Yep. You know, we've, I can't tell you, and I'm not joking. You can, I can put you in touch with some of the retailers. They'll tell you that, Hey, I've never heard of you, but I've had five people come in just this week asking me about your cigars. Yeah. You know, that's and, great. That's a big, and that's, that's a big uh, selling point there for sure. Well, that's really what when we're talking about when when you, when you, like when you talk about your listeners own the Stogie Geeks brand, that's the same thing that I'm talking about. So I may own the company, but the consumer owns the brand. They they're pushing it. They're they're deciding the value. They're telling people it's worth the time to bring it in and try it. A lot of people are sharing it. You know, the the, the cigar community is very is is exceptional in that way. You know, and being approachable like i still participate in all the groups nelson sees me we talk yeah i'm still in all the facebook groups i smoke everything it's just, i don't just post cigars of me smoking stolen thrones because i'm still a cigar geek like yeah. i love cigars i smoke everything yeah i don't take the band off if you make a great cigar and i enjoy it i'm gonna post it yep you yeah know? that's that's true and that you know that brings up another point one of the things i i appreciate about lee and and, and other um owners as well as is, there are just some some owners that are just they make themselves accessible to the consumers, and and that's one of the things I appreciate about uh, Lee and his team is you know they they do make themselves available. I've been on some of their live streams; it's super cool. It's like you're hanging out with people, smoking cigars. Uh, granted, it's virtually, but it's it's no different really than hanging out in cigar lounge. You're all saying the same things and talking the same make crap it, you normally would. Making fun of Kevin. Making fun of Kevin. Yeah, poor Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you hey, gonna I do to get in on I, these I, uh herfs, these virtual herfs? Like you gotta like no Nelson or something? <laughs> you come over anytime. All right. Say I'll be like Jack Nicholson and wait till they get a load of me. <laughs> 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 uh, anyway, uh <laughs> um I a super fan of like take us through as much as you want to 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 tell us like about the dynamics of working on a project with Noel Rojas like like you know you went down to the factory like not really how that happened but like what happened <laughs> you know what I mean like so, so like yeah like, no, like cuz I'm so- sure cuz I'm sure it, it, and, and then I guess it's, it's a this is a gigantic bulk of the interview two-part question right and if you want to intertwine them, that's fine. My my brain can certainly work work that way. Um, I'm sure you and your partner had a vision in in your head as to flavor profile, right? How did you come to all of those conclusions while you were dynamically trying to work together to come up with the different versions? Like, what was in your head, and how did that get to us consumers? That's the second part of the question. And the first part of the question is like. You worked with Noel Rojas. Like, I'm very intrigued on how you worked with <laughs> Noel Rojas. Personally, I'm very intrigued. Like, this is self satisfying. I'm sorry. Like, you know, because <laughs> no, I'm I I was introduced to Noel Rojas's brands, um, uh, almost a year ago, right? Okay. Uh, my co-host sent it to me, and um, you know, I was like, who the hell is this Noel Rojas guy? Right, because he sent me a bunch of sticks. And he's like, "Dude, you interviewed him on Stucky Geeks." I was like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> right." And 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 then since then, like, I really cannot get off his stuff. Like, cannot get off his stuff. I, I, I Nelson will attest to you. I like, can, I beat that to death. Like, I love that. I love that wrong. stick. I love <laughs> that guy. Wrong, like, so, <laughs> it it started as you know. It was a really, really, really weird situation, to be honest with you, right? Like, we had made the conscious effort that we were going to do this, and we were going to do it our way and do it the right way, what we perceived to be the right way anyway, um, until we realized we don't know shit, and then we had to learn it. Um, But really what it came down to, man, is that we wanted to work with someone that was going to let us control the process. Like, I I told you before we hopped on here that I wasn't just going to buy a cigar and have someone put a a band on it 
and then see what happened. If I failed, if we failed collectively, JR and I, it was going to be because of the choices we made. It was going to be because of a product we created. And you'd be surprised at how few people in the industry want to give you that control over tobacco selection, over the whole process um, from, you know, seed to box, essentially. Mm. Um, and so we got to talking to people. We had a conversation with a, a bunch of folks and not a negative towards any of those. Like we were just honest about what we wanted. And from the get-go, we got on a conversation with Noel. He asked about us. Like I said, I've been around the industry for about 15 years just from traveling and meeting people. And the right people said that I was serious. And so he called me and I was like, cool, I'll be on the next flight to Dallas. And sure as shit, I was. Um, and from that point on, it, it, it just kind of took off. He, he let me sampled the tobaccos that I wanted to sample. He let me choose the selections and, and the blend types that I want to do, the, the ratios and all that. And he put it together and that's how it was done. He didn't say a word. And when I would ask him questions, he would answer them. But when I said, what would you think? His response was, this is your shit, man. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You know, and where I made mistakes, he would let me make mistakes. And then when I came to him and said, this went wrong, this went wrong. And he would tell me why, uh, dude, he, he's been, uh, he's been awesome to have as a mentor and, a guiding light through the whole process because the cool thing about him is he's been honest about the mistakes he's made previously. Cause I've been a fan like you a little, a lot longer than you, but from when he was doing Guayacan, the Sabor de Esteli and, you know, with doing working with Ezra and all those guys, mm -hmm. um, we've always liked what he was doing with flavor and how he was doing it. And then when we get down to it and just the fact that he guided me and, and let me make the choices that I wanted to make, unabated right like it wasn't some caveat oh you well you i know you want to do this but why don't you try this it's never been that way um and that's really about like we discussed is is you know giving that authentic 100 percent platform you know right. so yeah i couldn't pick a better person to work with right were there any runners up like if you didn't know Tonight. Uh, after talking to him, no, but we had other people that we would have gladly worked with. It yeah. doesn't mean that yeah. he's the only person to work with in the industry. Um, but we just kind of vibed, man. Like you, you just get it right. Yep. When, when you're honest about what you want and he likes, I, he says, I like where you're headed. Let's do it. Yep. It was easy. You yep. know? Yep. It, it, it reminds me of my, my relationship with, uh, our other co-host drew, right? I never physically met drew. Like I've never. Uh, he was a Stogie Geek listener, and our relationship started with him. I always mention, I usually, probably 98% of the times, I have a Bloody Mary with a cigar. Uh, all red wine in the evening, but Stogie Geeks is, uh, is not filmed in the evening. It used to be. <laughs> It used to be, and I used to do a lot of red wine pairings and whatnot. <laughs> it's, it's not that I switch drinks. It's just, it's just for me, smoking a cigar and having a drink, I don't drink with every cigar that I smoke. Thank God, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> right? I, I would have a lot more problems. <laughs> you know, and my life would probably be a lot more chaotic <laughs> than it is, right? But like, you know, this time of day, it's like, yeah, nice Bloody Mary doing that there. And so what happened was Drew was like, he texted me and tagged me in a Facebook post, and um, you know, hey, I'm having a Bloody Mary and a cigar. Wow, you were right about pairing it with the cigar like that that was just a basic post like you know just interacting with the story geek audience okay cool glad you liked it enjoy you know then you pm and or dm whatever the hell it's called right and then and then you freaking go back and forth and you know what do you like to smoke and then we started talking and then finally i'm like yo dude like like i'm a phone guy like i would call like the person sitting next to me on the desk in the same room i would call him on the phone to talk to him like i'm just i'm just old school like that right so um you know unless i think that it's gonna work right so uh you know and, and then i just hopped on the phone with him and we were talking and i was like hey man like you know you want to do some stick reviews on story geek he's like are you serious so i was like yeah sure why not i mean knock yourself out and the same thing happened with nelson like i met nelson i don't know three four five months ago right and and uh, a cigar shop owner introduced me to Nelson. He goes, he's up your alley. He likes all that rapper binder filler stuff. And that's what concerns me, right? <laughs> like, dude, yeah. rapper binder filler, dude, that's the foundation of your freaking business. You moron. Like, freaking, that's the foundation <laughs> of your business. Why don't you try to sell cigars? But anyway, I'm sorry. I'm trying it. I'm, I'll take a, I should probably take a sip. Take a breath. Take a take breath. A breath. Yeah, yeah. 
was it like freaking ohm right <laughs> so it's like it's like dude and so i just started bsing with nelson i said the same thing i was like hey man you you want to come on story talk about some sticks he's like sure and then boom he showed up and and now he's like a little puppy like he just always shows up you know, <laughs> you know, you know what i mean he, he's like <laughs> never you know, goes away right he's like you know if you start feeding the squirrel every every morning the squirrel's gonna be there at seven in the morning <laughs> want, want, want some, some, you know whatever the hell you feed squirrels you know cereal i don't know right so yeah so you know um so working with noel right like he let you fail like any of those blends that you're like kind of like ah eh, they're not really ready but maybe we can go like do you i mean you must have it cataloged somewhere like you oh, have yeah. you have to catalog your steps um cuz life gets in the way right um i have sure. like i have black books like like i brew craft beer right oh, and, nice. and uh i've made some super cool ones like super cool people like i made like 4 years ago like you should do that and i like i wrote down every recipe and and what went in so i have a craft beer thing i've made my own gin i've made uh wine right that's a little hotter but i made some wine um I so you're, you're you're ready for prohibition to start again is what you're saying no yeah i know i i just honestly like like this is probably like the the crux of like what fascinates me about this industry is it's a craft yeah right it's a craft and some people in cigar shops say i'm full of shit and some people say i know my shit and some people just like yeah 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 i just like my freaking and then you can fill in the blanks right and it's like dude like you don't smoke different cigars you don't like this is a craft man and not for nothing this is a journey and more importantly it's your journey it's your it journey because it's your palate right I right. know what my pal likes. Happens to be a lot of shitload of Noel Rojas's, right? I can't get <laughs> off them. Like I cannot get off them. It's like crack. Like I not not that I have experience with that. I'm just saying, like <laughs> like like uh, like like I, I just I just I cannot get off of it. I cannot get off that brand. I can't. You're right. No, you're right. I mean, it's so it is, and it's funny because I wouldn't consider myself uh, creative until I tapped into the tobacco portion of my life. Like that's where those creative portions come from, you know? Um, and yeah, there's a ton of stuff. I mean, so I'm a Habano guy and you notice that we don't have a Habano cigar yet, except mm. for the Remy Jean, which is our event only is my personal cigar. Um, but it is failing. It's, it's constantly tweaking and toying with it. That's the fun part, man. That's the best part, you know, and you, you're right. I, I'm just like you. I have my little notebook where I have my, you know, uh, formulas and recipes written down and the selection, what we've done and where we got it from. And, but it is, you know, and it's funny because the Habano, which will be our next regular production early 2021. I mean, we worked tirelessly as easy as the crook came together everything after that has been a pain in the ass it's like <laughs> when i did the crook i'm like oh man this is great this is super easy like let's just we'll just bang a bunch of these out <laughs> nope <laughs> right and so like it got to a point where i would call noel and he was like if you want to talk about the habano i can't do this right now because <laughs> i because i was just hounding him about it we've probably went through about 20 to 30 iterations mm -hmm. um and the guys in our group and in our inner circle, they I, I let those guys, those are my guinea pigs. Like, I don't say anything to them. If I think something is close, I'll let them smoke it. And everyone, they're like, dude, this is this is it. And I'm like, nah, it's shit. Yep. <laughs> but it is. It, it's about pushing yourself. Like you're saying with beers, you know, um, you, you create something and then you tweak it. And you revisit it constantly. And generally, I trust myself in the gut to where like the crook I knew immediately. Like we spent about two to three days straight of just smoking Purito, sampling tobacco. And the there was a very minor tweak from actually getting to put the blend together from where it started to what it is now in production. And it but it's not always that way because you're you're constantly, like you said, expressing your palate. Right. Right. And, and, and the it, things that you want to put out there. Right. And and I think that that that's so important that that, that the Stoy Geek listener or for any podcast, right? Like it's it's about your palate. It's your journey, right? I don't keep a journal of of every cigar that I I smoke, right? For sure. 
Um, but I certainly have a process, right? I walk around my little leather for, um, everything's decomp, uh, everything has its own. Yeah. Thank you. You knew where I was going, right? (laughs) Like everything, like, like, you know, like I have a bag for boxing. I have a bag for MMA. I have a bag for work. My son has a, 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 a diaper bag backpack for when we go out as a family and for school and blah, 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 and all of that stuff. And but in my process, like I have like bands here collected right here on the table that like I'm, um, you know, I got to review and get to, and mm-hmm. then I go, and then some of them I smoke, and I'm like I'm not reviewing this yet, right? But I'll but I'll write it down, like I ah, rekindle it, you know, in a couple months, maybe it needs some aging and all of that. I, I'm I'm not big on 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 aging stuff. Uh, just so you know, Nelson gave me a little variety pack. There's like one left. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he gave it to me at like nine o'clock this morning. What time? Right, like nine o'clock this morning's gone. Like it's that's. They're like, meant to be smoked, man. It, it's it's my boring. those are my sticks for the day, man. Like that's it. Like you know, and 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 I'm kind of like a nomad gypsy in that regards. But I think for me, it keeps it keeps my journey. Like I like that feeling of of freedom, right? And I've spoken to other story geeks, former co-host. And current co hosts and they're like, oh, you know, I, I got to smoke this for a review. And I'm like, dude, just freaking let it ride. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like Yeah, uh, you never you wanted know, to like, become like, an obligation. Like, like, like right? even, even last night, it was like 10 o'clock at night last night, Eastern Standard Time. So 9 o'clock over there in Texas. And Drew's like, oh, you know, I haven't gotten to this and that. And I'm like, dude, like, you have a busy schedule and you're in the middle of a transition. Like, it's okay. Like, you know, smoking when you can enjoy it. Like, don't smoke it, you know, because we're talking about those Black Fridays, Nelson, that that yeah, when HVC. I sent them. Yeah, the yeah. HVC. I sent them in 2019, and now HVC came out 2020 version. And I'm like, I want you to smoke the 2019, and then we send you the 2020, and you do a comparison because we will do a comparison, especially for, like, a cigars that come out historically, like, year after year, right? Yeah. I believe, like, that's their third year, to my knowledge. It might be fourth or fifth. Sorry. Send the hate email at Nelson. He'll know, right? And, and, <laughs> and you know, and, and it's just like, you know, it's like because I like to see the progression of the company. And and well, if you could kind of, like, go with it, right? It's almost like freaking like the Karate Kid, man. Like, you know, you got to be like a tree and bend and, you know, all that stuff. You know? <laughs> You know, no, yeah, Nelson's just shaking his head. What's the matter, Nelson? What? What? What's the matter? What do you want me to say? Your analogies, man. Your analogies. <laughs> hey, man. I, hey, what's wax in here? Off. What's in here comes out here, and it's Johnny's fault because he produces it. No, I'm like it. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. So synergy, right? You spent some time when you answered my question about synergy, and I love it when you say like you just know when you know, and that was your synergy with with noel right you just you just knew that this was your spot and this is where you're gonna go from here and um what's what's coming up in the future besides the habano one uh well we have a lot planned man we're gonna nice. launch our first limited edition as well um right up my so, alley yeah so we're we're we got a lot going on, man. Once the Habano comes out, we got our first summit edition. You'll probably see some more special release exclusive project uh, products from us. Um, so yeah, it, it's it, we're just we've been busy as hell, man. We've been really lucky through the pandemic to push through and and kind of keep things going. Um, there's a lot in store. I'm always working. I'm always planning the next thing. But the, the the big hurdle is, you know, like everybody else, get back to as normal as we can with the pandemic and. And uh, you know, move on to the the third regular production release, and then start pushing a couple more limited edition projects. Yep. Where can Stogie Geeks get their hands on some of your products? I've actually uh, did a URL search for you, and and you know, which the Stogie Geeks would do and whatnot. And some places are sold out. <laughs> Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, uh, I'm like, well, that sucks because I can't get my hands on on some more. Um, you know, so like what, what guidance do you give, uh, for, for us, us stogie geeks, uh, to sure. kind of get our hands on some of your products. Cause you're not in all these shops. So we are, we are going to launch a retail map. So where you can find everyone in, in a lot of our, uh, our local 
retail B and M's that carry us across the country. They ship, um, and they do have, you know, their online web. We have one online retailer, Cigar Federation. Um, our stuff does move uh, pretty fast, as you pointed out. Um, really fast. But we're out there. We are going to try to assist in uh, in launching the retail map, so you can get in touch with these B and M's and and get the product into your hands. Okay. Cool. So I'm just going to task Nelson with getting me some, and I'll give him cash. Right. So I, I have a mini it, yeah. hoard here of uh, <laughs> stolen throne. <laughs> where the hell did you, where'd you get all these things? Whoa, 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 this whoa. is just one bag I have. No. One bag. <laughs> See? You carry them in a plastic. Uh, uh, do you keep them in a plastic baggie because you're, you're taking a page out of my book, Nelson? No, I don't no? have uh, any more shelving in my humidor, so oh. I stuck them in a bag on a shelf in the humidor. Yeah. N Nelson, uh, it is a true story. I do walk around with just the plastic baggie with cigars and that's i don't <laughs> like i i have a travel humidor it's on my desk i never use it like that I in just, his backpack and, and, and yeah so i i take the plastic baggie <laughs> and i shove the i shove the freaking cigars in my backpack and i and out the door i go and, and yeah man, that's, that's uh that's all true like that's i'm the same i'm the same way i have a i have like one travel humidor that i use everyone gives me all these like fancy carriers i oh. never have them Oh. Like if I'm wearing like a flannel or something, I'll put a couple in my pocket, but you know, I'm on the go. So I just throw it in a bag or, you know, have the one travel human or I have like hundreds of cases. My wife keeps buying them for me and I never use them. Yeah. I so, just, I'm, yeah, I'm the same way. Oh, this cigar got cracked a little in my backpack. Oh, I have to smoke this now. Right. right. Oh, for you, right? Like, right. Uh, like, oh, uh, yeah. we go. We gotta save this thing. Like, yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah. See, Nelson hey, has hey. like the whole the whole prep thing. He, you open up. He has a travel humidor. It's alphabetized and all that stuff. That's I'm organized. I'm yeah, organized. it's a what? little like, on the top. You know what I mean? But anyway, go ahead, Nelson. <laughs> so, Lee, you you mentioned the Habano. So, I I'm I've been keenly interested in what what the hell are you calling it? What what is this thing that's coming out next year? Oh, it's going to be called the Three Kingdoms. Ah, okay. So we so we've sourced tobacco from three different countries. Um, Very so, cool. Uh, it's a it's a Genius. really cool cigar. I finally I know Noel's tired of hearing about it, so he's really happy that I finalized it as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, it's it's a it's a really cool cigar. It's utilizing you know an Ecuadorian habano um, over Nicaraguan uh, binder and fillers from Honduras as well as Nicaragua. Um, so it's a, it's a really, really, really cool cigar. We use some of the similar fillers that we utilized in the call to arms, um, with some Lajero from Honduras and, um, a, a few different regions. So it's, uh, I'm really excited about that cigar. I think it's going to pair. It's going to be a nice different wild card for the portfolio for sure. Oh, looking forward to it, man. That's exciting. The three kingdoms. Great name. Freaking genius uh i i have had the opportunity and privilege to spend uh some time definitely not as much as you lee for sure but some time off air uh via phone with noel yeah and take out his cigar knowledge for a second for the purpose of this question have you had the opportunity to talk to him about like business positioning practices yeah yeah because so. he is a freaking genius with it was like dude like like honestly like like i was a fan of the brand i was sold at the tobacco level right then i'm sold at the business level with him and sometimes on this show sometimes on the show a lot of times i'm sold to either one or the other and sometimes both but most of the times, it's either one or the other. Like I could, I could rattle the names. That'd be a freaking controversial show, at Nelson. We'll have no, we'll, we'll have no interviews, and and we could talk about my integrity. And I could say integrity. who I'm, in, who I'm impressed with business acumen, who I think is a phenomenal business person. But the cigars, eh, like, suspect, right? Or vice versa. <laughs> like the cigars are freaking awesome, but they have no clue how to freaking do that. And and I. I don't know if I'm the only one who has the courage behind the microphone to say it in the industry. I don't know, right? From what I hear, like, you know, um, I do. And and but like haven't speaking spoken to Noel off air about just cigars out of the question, just business positioning. Like 
he's someone, my advice to you, you want to hold on to that knowledge super tight. Yeah, it's, it's really cool that you say that because, you know, him and I come from different spectrums, right? Like he, we're, we're both hustlers, but we are packaged a little different. And so I, I have an MBA um, and he's self-taught. And the thing, sure. what he's been really good at doing is learning from past mistakes and educating himself. Like he'll even just, I'll get a random text. He'll ask me like, what do you think about this? Like, what, what how does this sound? And, and the way that he expresses himself and he learns, he's constantly reading. He's always asking me like, what books can I read? You know, like, or books on tape. Like we'll go from shop to shop while I'm in Texas with him and he'll have an audio learning. The guy is, uh, he just loves to learn. And I love that. It, it's, it's great when you can, when you can work with someone where, you're almost in a two person incubator. You're just constantly bouncing ideas on like, why did you choose to do this? Or what did you, you know, and it, it's good for me because when he's asking me these questions, it's putting our ideas and, and, and our baby to the test. Like, why am I doing this? What, what was the decision behind it? And does it make sense? But you're right. He, he's very good at marketing himself and how he started the, the rebranding of Rojas cigars. And how he started the rebranding of himself. Because right. bringing back to how I met Noel Rojas this time and how my uh, co-host, Drew, had said, dude, you interviewed him on Story Geeks from, from what I said a you know half hour ago or whatever, right? Like, when I interviewed Noel Rojas for the first time, it was in 2017. He wasn't in the position that he was in now. And, like, he told us how he got in, into the industry. And, like... It was amazing. I I never forget this. I never forget like this interview. I was like, you know, well, how'd you get into the industry and how'd you get started? Now, Noel Rojas, ironically, was my first interview that I did alone as a Story Geeks host, and this is before Joe D had come onto the panel of hosts for a while, right? And way before uh, Drew and um and nelson right and i was like so how'd you get started in this and he's like well you know my father you know you call it high school but i was in school and the government came to our door and said this is what you're gonna do you're gonna work in tobacco fields and i was just like huh like to myself i'm like oh uh okay <laughs> yeah. like, you know what i mean and, and, and like and like i remember that interview and then how he's as he's now doing his thing he's just reinvented himself and he's putting himself in a category which is what i think is super important to do right you have to create a category for yourself and this goes for this isn't even cigar talk this counts for like your employment right if, if if you're employed by someone create a category for yourself within the company and you'll be employable if you're employee three four five six nine which can be replaced for three, four, five, six, two. I know those all. They're not in order now. Right? <laughs> right? If, 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 if they can be replaced, then you're not creating a category for yourself, and you're not going to make noise from managers. You know what I mean? And so yeah. the same thing works in the cigar industry, right? If you're not creating a category for yourself and not creating shelf space for yourself, you're just another stick. That's right. And you also mentioned in the beginning of your interview which I think was, was super kudos to you when some people said to you, you mentioned, oh, well, you came up with the Maduro first. Well, what am I going to come up with? Another mediocre Connecticut? Right? You create, you're like, you know what I mean? Like, like, you clearly are defined, and you defined yourself as boutique, right? Small batch boutique. You can toggle back and forth between that, right? Like, you, you, you knew who you were. And then you said, we're not going to come up with a Connecticut to introduce ourselves in the market and then see. We're going to go for the throw. And we're going to go for the takedown. Or we're going to go for the win and then try to put ourselves on the map. And, and I just want to just kind of highlight that attitude. Because I think in the small batch or boutique, that's the future of the industry. Now... Whether the Boutique Cigar Association likes to admit it or not, right? Here comes the controversial email right now, Nelson, right? 
whether the boutique cigar association wants to admit it or not, when I see like what they're doing and where they're going and and, and there, it's like it's like ah, the big guys and this guy considers himself boutique, but he sells and I'm making the number up two million cigars a year and uh, I'm talking about Espinosa, right? Going on and on and all of that stuff, right? It's like, dude, like just be you, bro. Like like do you and you will be fine. And that's what I think is that's what I'm getting from from this interview. I'm hoping that Nelson is and the story geeks are getting this information. Like, wow, like, like we should probably check out this brand and let's take a little bit of time and make a transition and talk about the blend and the taste and the flavor profile. If we could sure, like sure. what were you shooting for? Cause I don't want to tell you my experience from the stick yet until you tell me what you were shooting for. But, I don't want to be like, oh, yeah, I agree, and it's super awesome, and that's exactly what I got. I will tell you that when I had – hold on. Let me go through my Rolodex over here. When I had the um, – the hell is it? The one with the, with the bird on it. Raven. The yeah, that's the crook, the crook of the crown. The crook of the crown, yeah. When I, when I, thank you. When, when, I, when, I, when I had the crook of the crown, right, I noticed towards the end there's a sharp – turn in flavor profile and i just want to like make that known so that if we happen to agree with the profile the listeners don't really think i'm kissing your ass <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i mean so it, it's all a part of what you said right creating a segment for yourself and knowing who you are but and it's it's not just cigars you know it, you know, Ford doesn't come out with a vehicle thinking everyone's going to buy this truck. They're going after this truck buyer, right? And it's the same thing with us is knowing what we're providing and who we're trying to provide it to. And for me, it was flavor. That's what I wanted to do. Like we don't use Seco. We use only Viso and Lajero because it provides more flavor. It's more expensive to make, but that's, it produces a better quality product and like you talked about when you talk about boutique this gets thrown out a lot and we get asked about like what our definition is and to me it has nothing to do with numbers because growth is part of success you want to grow but it's the quality and what you're putting into the product at, at any point in time if i'm worrying about my bottom line over the product i'm no longer boutique in my opinion right and so if we're we're continuing to scale up but at any point in time i think that quality is dropping we're not scaling up anymore because that's that's what we owe the consumer. But to your to your question about the blend, really, when it came down to to the blend of the crook, it was that rich Samoto Nicaraguan tobacco, right? That heavy espresso that you get in the middle third of both cigars, the Robusto and the Toro. The 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 Toro leans more to the dark chocolate, and where the the Robusto goes more towards your heavy red spice and yep. through the espresso. Yep. But as you mentioned in the, the final third, it comes back with the spice as you're finishing off the espresso. You're getting a little bit of chocolate, but it's it's heavy spice to finish you off. But very clean, doesn't burn your palate out, sticks there, has a nice finish to it, but it kind of drifts away like it's supposed to. Oh, Okay, so you said it drifts away. Me, it was a like a, huh? This is different. Like it, it, it was. I noticed a really. It was kind of like a cliff hanging. Drops into something else. It drops and then into it finishes out, and then a, it finishes yeah, out, away. and then I got the chocolate, which is a lot lighter. I had the robusto, right, Nelson? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. So I want to double check. I want to be all set. I don't want to say you know had a preferito and they don't come up with one. I like the Toro, so I wasn't. <laughs> right. I, I'm a Toro guy, so I, yeah. I wasn't gonna. That's give why you gave me the yeah. I, <laughs> like I'm a Robusto guy by like default, right? I love the Robustos there, but interesting because I want to try the Toro next, Nelson. So add that to your, add that to yours, Nelson. Your you're plastic bag. You're gonna fill up the Ziploc bag. Do you want me to return it? <laughs> no, I got more. It's right. good. So I'll return you, it and say the Robusto, the... it went heavy in spice into the espresso and then finished with the chocolate. Yeah, it was heavy heavy in red spice. Uh retro hail was like like 
not as strong as I expected it, right? But it's really it, clean. It was it was it was extremely clean. Right, like I was like, okay, like I'm about to retro hail this bitch, like you know what I mean? You know, for like the first time I got once I get it going, and I'm like, huh, that was interesting. So it was a little bit more red pepper on the palate, super clean on the retro hail, comes through, consistent, fine, burning through. There you go. Fast forward, right, and at the end it was like. Boom, chocolate, but not as much pepper. And I smoked that thing down to the nub, and I was like, "Wow!" Like, like for me, it was a cliffhanger stoppage of of, of flavor profile coming in. Uh, smoke content, super cool. Um, definitely would. That's why I asked you, like, where can we get our hands on some more? Because yeah. you know, I'm like, "Wow!" Like, I I really need to to explore this brand for myself uh, more. And uh, that was my takeaway too. Like I noticed that cliffhanger switch over to chocolate, a little bit of espresso there. Um, yeah. So the thing is, is like it's one of those things where I don't, I don't smoke or uh, on regular mild cigars, right? But for me, the power needs to be. I didn't want a cigar to be like hot sauce. I didn't want it to be hot for no reason. It yeah. had to be part of the flavor. It had to be nuanced and had to be there, but I, that wasn't going to be the driving factor. It needed to be those experiences like you had. Yep. And we, and we blended the Vitolas different for that specific reason to, to counteract the ratios of the wrapper to filler. Like Nelson will tell you that the Toro is a, quite a bit sweeter. Mm -hmm. It's definitely um, sweeter, which is why I prefer it. I'm going to message um, you. I'm going to message you a little bit, uh, Lee, for a little bit, right? Do you know what makes your what makes the retro hail kick up or down? For what do you mean? Like you know, like uh, you, uh, in regards to the um, to the cigar, when you, your your retro hail is super clean, right? Yeah. When you were that's the what, that's when, the aging that's the aging and the processing of the tobacco. It's having fully processed and aged tobacco is why it's so clean. You don't get that gritty thing. You don't get yep. that gritty feel on your retro or your palate. Mm, I love interviewing boutique cigar companies who know their shit. <laughs> uh, I was gonna bet. I was waiting, wait, waiting for an. Yeah, it, it, it's the actual aging process that yep. leads to how that's going to go down. Now I know, like old school story geeks, like holy shit, is this all talk coming back? No, it's probably not. Right, it's only because we have an educated <laughs> person we're interviewing <laughs> with, right? <laughs> right, but yeah, but no, um, yeah, it, it it's the actual aging process. And you said that you use v you use zero seco. It's all viso, viso. Yeah, and the hero. Yeah. And 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 the hero. Yeah. So and and what and that's when we talk about you know tobacco selection, yep. right? I we've rejected a ton of tobacco because at the end of the day, you we've talked about previously like. It's not your job as a consumer to have to age a cigar. It's my job to make sure the tobacco that you're receiving is aged and processed correctly. Yep. And you know the difference. And you, if you, if you smoke a, a cigar that has an under-processed or young tobacco in it, and then you smoke a cigar that doesn't, you know immediately. Right. You, you, and and like you pointed out, our our retros are super super clean. Well, right. that's because the tobacco is the way it should be. It's aged fully, it's processed fully, and it, it leads to a better product. Right. right. And there's a lot of people that, that doesn't mean that you can't use Seco, right? That doesn't mean that I'm right and everybody that does is wrong. That's not true at all. There's actually some great blenders and cigar folks that utilize Seco in the right way, and they hang their hat on it, and they do it amazingly. Right. It's just the choice that I made with what we had available. And I like to take it up a notch with the Viso and the Hero. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's super tasty um, for sure. And um, I can't wait to get my hands on some of the other stuff. So, Nelson, stop filling your bag. Cause that's, oh. about, <laughs> that's about half. That's about half. I, that's As you one. said, they're hard to get. So it's not easy to give up either. Dude, I'm going to drive down to your freaking house and rip off that hat <laughs> off of you and steal your stuff. If you're, yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> and then Nelson you know, will be called we, we, we see a news flash that Nelson got held up at a red light. <laughs> how did you get that hat, Nelson? Like, how did that happen? Uh, it was actually one of his uh, live streams. I won it. Yeah. So how do I get invited to these live streams? 
You're in. Can you're the Stoy Geeks, uh, regular Stoy Geeks listeners, or these like private invitation only? No, man. I might do one tonight, actually. I'll send you guys a link you posted to your folks. Anyone's welcome to join, man. We That's just awesome. hang out. And we we started doing it because of COVID, because we were on the right. road so much. And and then, you know, it got to the point where, like, hey, you know, we don't – when's going to do an event? We don't know. So we're like, why don't we just start doing Zoom, start hanging out with people, yeah. talking to people. I'm going to yeah. go on record and say that I like that hat a lot as well. Oh! <laughs> uh, did the audience hear that too, John? They did. Okay, good. I just oh, I don't the know cloud, the, the voice in the sky. No, jo- Johnny the voice in the sky. We need two freaking hats in this studio. Stat. I mean, super stat. Nelson, get on They're that. They're fire, man. These are fire. Dude, get on that. Like I'm like a freaking hat guy. This is true. You know, I'm a hat guy. Uh, is, is it fitted or no? No, that's no, good. It's a Richardson uh, trucker hat. That's good so because yeah, I that's love good. trucker hats. Too, that's so actually good because, like, because of my because of my COVID cut, I've let my hair ride uh, for almost a calendar year now. Uh, Looks good. Uh, thanks, man. And uh, you know, I, I'm going with like if I shaved it on the sides, I could do the Paul E D, right? Nice. Uh, <laughs> who's also from Rhode Island, right? That that cracks me up. Anyway, anyway, the, the Jersey Shore. I'm like, these people got paid for this. Right. This is like a day in the life of college. But anyway, but, <laughs> but anyway, being Italian, I'm just saying, you know. Um. Yeah, Nelson. I, I was going to talk a little bit about how how I even got introduced to to Lee. Um. Someone had given me a crook of the crown. Um. I and Lee, I apologize. I can't remember who the hell it was. I got it through one of those Facebook groups or whatever. Sure. And uh. I remember I was driving. I remember exactly where I was, which is kind of pathetic that this stood out to me so much. But is that the one you threw on the track in the highway? Oh no, <laughs> Nelson. Nelson. Nelson likes to like def- again, right? You want to talk about like? Hey, like, I'm gonna get fined. Be like, careful what you say. <laughs> like category, like category creation. Nelson. Nelson's like, well, I want to invent a couple new categories on the Story Geeks rating system. And he has one that he throws out on the highway. It's called the pothole filler. Yeah, the pothole filler. (laughs) That wasn't one of those, right? It was not a pothole filler. Okay, good answer. There you go. Pothole fillers when you're driving, you're like, I can't smoke this damn thing anymore. And you just toss it out the window. Uh, No, I was was driving and I started smoking it. I was going to a friend's house actually to give him cigars. And I literally pulled over, messaged the guy. I was like, dude, this thing is amazing. Is this like some kind of secret age cigar. I'm like, I've never heard of this thing. What is this? And he actually connected me with Lee. He's like, hey, tell this guy. He's the owner. And next thing you know, you know, I got a hat. I got tons of these sticks. I love these things. And and now he's on the show. I, I think it's a fantastic journey. It is a fantastic journey because he's like, oh, you know, a stolen throne. I'm like, yeah, sure. Throw him on. We'll see what's up. You know what I mean? That's what I say to everything. You want to come on the show? <laughs> Bring and knock yourself out, right? Because uh, because as you know, and 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 this, I think the story geeks will appreciate. Uh, other than the five minutes of chaos or ten minutes of chaos of show prep, like I never met you till now, right? That's right. So it's not like we had like a pre-interview, and these are the questions I'm going to ask you and stuff like that. Like you know, if it, this is what the, this is where like the story geeks platform is very different from other forums, right? If you can't come on your show and talk about your own cigar company that you know, or give your full name, right, for cigars, <laughs> right, like, like you, you, you don't belong on the show. Like, that's it. Like, if you yeah, don't know I never, it, like, I, like, never, like, I never really understood that when people do the interviews and they're like, here's what we're going to ask, here's how we're going to go. Nah. The questions. Like, I, we're, uh, we're an open book, man. That's the whole point. Hey, of I'm an are, open right? book. Yeah. I'm an open book. You want to you wanna have a Zoom meeting with me? You can email me at joe at storygeeks.com. I'll give you the Calendly link. You can book 30 minutes with me. We can talk about freaking cigars, whatever you want to do. That's fine. Like, knock yourself out. Like, I'm an open book. You ask me any questions. You want to play Stump Joe Hosempa? Let's do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> let's freaking do it. Like, like, let's do it. Because, honestly, like, I'm on a fascinating journey right now. Like, a fascinating journey to me. And it's brand new to me. Like, I am on a freaking quest to find a goddamn good Gurkha, right? <laughs> and, 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 and not for nothing, like like I'm so up there in the company where I'm doing Zoom meetings and they're shipping me stuff and and I'm like, dude, I'm not seeing it. Like I'm not, 
And by the way, I'm giving them the luxury to meet with me at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right? They're two hours back, right? I'm, I'm a VP, and I'm like, dude, you're the first cigar I'm having, so I'm fresh in my palate, and this is what I'm searching for. Send me stuff that works because I'm sick and tired of people going poo-poo on you and, and, and doing that there. Like, you, you have your own space. So I'm on a personal quest to find and 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 do that there that's like my like like project right it's not my 2021 project it's my happening it's happening as we speak right and i'm almost there to like give like these are the three sticks that you need and i've smoked through some i-95 that's our highway <laughs> i-95 uh pothole oh, fill is for sick. sure <laughs> but i'm like i'm like hey man i'll give you the freaking benefit of the doubt let's do it because i'm on a quest for this because I, I, I think it's one of those companies, again, that is in a different situation than you guys, but it's like, eh, like, there's got to be some good stuff out there. Cause you oh, can't, there definitely, cause there you, definitely does, because they, they work with some good people. Right, right. Like, right. They're, not, they're not all made at the same place, and it, right. it is really, um, it's really sad when you know the people in some of these places that are working with them, and you know that they can do good work, but sometimes they're handcuffed, right, at, sure. cre- at the creative level, so... Uh, good luck on that journey, Bubba. <laughs> That's all right. If I don't, uh, sorry, it's 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 just it. Good luck on that journey, Bubba. I have a couple that I'm like, all right, they could work. Like they could work. Like we could work it, but we'll see. You know, I'm on a bunch of different journeys for story geeks, but you know, it's crazy. That's the point, though, right? The whole thing is a journey. Uh, Stolen it, Thrones it, cigars it is. is our journey as well. It is. It is, and I want to go through the journey of your portfolio. Uh, I have luxury of just freaking. Putting Nelson up against the corner and grabbing his throat and saying, "Give me some scars." So right. there you go. <laughs> violence. What the I'm, hell? I'm just saying. Like, well, what do you think? Sometimes, I'm gonna say, "Oh, send me some Sometimes it'd be like that. What? Uh, what? Sometimes it, it'd be like that. Yeah. Sometimes you have to. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, he's got a whole bag. He's the one who showed it. You know what I mean? So yeah. Um, what are you gonna do? H- have you ever gotten involved with the Boutique Cigar Association? Like, have you ever done an interview with them or anything like that? I have not. I have right. not. I've had conversations with members, but yep. I haven't done an interview or anything super deep with that. Um, I've done some stuff with the, the PCA, and we've had some conversations with the great folks like Phil from Uptown Cigar. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I know of them. I've had relationships with people in there, but I've never done an interview with them or not. I think when you gave your definition of boutique, uh, off air, I'm going to put you – um, it'll happen on Monday, right? Because of okay. my schedule, right? Off air, I'm gonna ping you, um, someone who you should you should get on their show. Okay. They they have yeah, a they, they have a podcast. Too. Um, I I I think that they should hear from you, right? Um, and I also think that like that you you because like you're the breath of fresh air. That. Not that I think that they need. They do their own thing. But I think that, like, you guys need need to definitely meet. So, cool, off, man. so I'm on, glad to, man. Yeah, Whatever so we on can Monday, do for the industry, we're happy to do. Yeah, sure. yeah. They, they have a show. I don't know the, the, the cadence of it or how it works and all of that stuff. But you should definitely go on there because I, I like your poised position with business. And um, can't wait to... Hear the other side of the story someday when we meet meet your partner. He'll be like that unorganized kid. He's like, that's, right. that's right. That's what he'll do too. He'll come on here. That kid don't know nothing. You know. <laughs> so w- w- when you guys went down to the factory, did both you guys go? Like both yeah. you guys went? Yeah, that's yep. awesome. Um, dynamics of having a partner, right? Uh, how's that work? Because when you're trying to get uh, two pallets to make one consumer decision which is multiple pallets uh take us story geeks to be a fly on that wall it's actually pretty uneventful um i like it because generally what will happen is you know i might take the forefront of putting it together but he's the sounding board he'll tell me well what about this or what about that it's never super contentious i mean the creative process works really really well actually i mean it's um And we generally, like, our first limited edition is all him because I want him to have the spotlight, so I had nothing to do with it. I was actually at another meeting when him and Noel were 
um, you know, working on that. And like, I came back and tried it and gave my feedback, but that was all him. So it's generally about just, you know, driving the bus collectively. And it, it's nice because it creates, like we talked about, that, that just incubator of ideas where it's good to have someone to give you feedback before you push it out to other people. Like, and we're super objective. If we think it's shit, it's shit. You know, like it's not about, oh, it's good. But no, I mean, we're brutally honest about the, the process because we both have a concise idea of what this is about and who we are. Okay. I'm digging it. I'm thinking it. Nelson, you got to get his partner on here. We got to hear his side of the story too. Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't had a chance to talk to him. I, I have chatted with uh, Kevin. Um, actually, you know, I, I know you mentioned him earlier. Lee, what, what exactly is Kevin uh, Moss's role um, in the company? So Kevin's actually active military and he's coming up now on the sales side. So basically, once he retires, um, he will be our full time director of sales. But he's also handles like the creation of our displays and our woodworks. So he does our ashtrays. He does our display boxes in house for the retail shops and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I've seen some of his work. It's it's pretty spot on. It's it's really incredible woodwork. He he's awesome, man. We're super lucky. I bust his balls all the time because I pay him to be able to do that. Um, but the thing is, is, you know, it, we're super lucky in the folks that are involved with us. We've almost found two guys in Josh and Kevin that care more about the company than we do, which is extremely difficult to do. Right. So we, we, we have a really tight group. Um, and, and, and it falls into what we talked about, Joe, is we're all super honest. Like I'll ask those guys. It's not just because, you know, I'm the founder and, and the face that I don't get feedback. And if they don't like it, they're allowed to say that it's shit. And yeah. I think it's, you know, when you treat these grassroots relationships, it just fosters creativity and it fosters, at the end of the day, better products. I mean, we do that well, with yeah. our graphic design. We, I met the guy that does like the call to arms work and everything from this point on at an event. This young kid came in, uh, buy some cigars and, you know, he's nervous to talk to me. I could tell he comes up to Josh like, hey, who does your graphic design work? Are you looking for somebody? Josh just points at me. He comes over. We give him a shot and that's how it goes. I like it. Well, he did a hell yeah. of a fine job graphically designing that hat. <laughs> <laughs> you really, so you, you like the hat? Uh, I'm you, digging that. You, you I'm digging like, that. You like picking up on that? Because uh, honestly, the reason why I wear a hat is pretty simple, right? With 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 with, with hair that's uncontrollable like this. And if you follow me on Facebook, you can see where my uncontrollable hair comes from. It comes from my son, <laughs> or mine comes from his, right? And, and and it's like, dude, some like today, I had intentions of wearing a hat, right? And I put my pomade in my hair, and I said, "Fuck, look pretty good." good. I'm yeah, riding it, and I'm right, <laughs> and, and honestly, that what determines whether I wear a hat or not. And some days, you know, you have good hair days, and some days you don't. And today, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of digging it. Yeah, you guys will have to jump on the Zoom because everyone loves Jr. But generally, he's the the prototypical ball buster. That guy is just he's everything that I'm not. Right. So everyone loves it because he's just uh, he is. He's just a ball buster. The yeah. old goat is what we call him. Nice, nice, Nelson. You have a final question? Uh, I don't. I, I just wanted. I did want to say for the Stogie Geeks, and and I think we talked about this right before the show started. But the one thing I, I really appreciate about Lee and his company is they're accessible. Uh, they're accessible to their customers. Um, you know, we've talked a little bit on the show. They they do some uh, some social media interactions and engagements. Uh, so you know, keep a, an, an eye out for that, and and definitely try their stuff. Um, I'm. There's no secret. I'm a big fan of his stuff. Uh, it's really good. I highly recommend you. You know, from from me, you start with the crook of the crown. Uh, you cannot go wrong with that stick. Nelson recommends the Toro, and Joe definitely recommends the Robusto. So get both. Get both. <laughs> That's right. You don't have to choose. Right? You don't have to choose. You, 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 you certainly don't have to choose for sure. Well, Lee, I want to thank you for appearing on Sto uh, Stogie Geeks. It was a privilege and an honor to meet you. I, I truly mean what I say when it comes to your poise and where you are. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more about your company. Uh, any type of press releases, send them my way. We'll get them out there. Uh, if you wanted to smoke stuff and review stuff on the show, 
I'll give you an address on Monday. Well, you know, so there and and any type of help you need or whichever. And then on Monday, I'll reach out to you so I can get you in touch with that Boutique Cigar Association. Because I really think that, like, you need to do, a like, a formal intro. And I'm going to introduce you to, there's two founders. There's really three. I only know two well. Uh, I'm going to text them today, have a conversation with them, chase them around the weekend, and then I'll give you all the information on Monday offline, obviously. Awesome. That's what Guys, the story keeps so going on from now till Monday because I can still talk about cigars from now till Monday, but I think both of our kids and family would have a problem with that. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> right? Awesome. Lee, thank you for appearing on Story Geeks. Story Geeks, we come back. We have Thanks, sticks Lee. of the week. Nelson will have some news, I'm sure. Stay tuned. <laughs>